What is up you guys? Welcome back to another one. If you're new to the channel, I am Gold Pony and today I am super excited. We are in the new 2020 Honda Accord courtesy of Apple Honda in York, PA. And so I think I've told you guys before, I've owned several different Hondas in my lifetime. Love Hondas, actually used to sell Hondas, believe it or not, if you didn't know that little fun fact. And although I do not currently own one, I am still super excited to be in this one today. So what do you say? As always, let's start with pricing. And so as expected, there are several different trim levels for the 2020 Honda Accord. First one being the LX, starting at $23,000. $870 hybrid starting at $25,470. The Sport, which actually is the one we have today, starting at $26,530. EX for $27,770. EXL for $30,270. And lastly, the top of the line touring starting at $36,100. But so that when it comes to the power plant, there are actually three different power plants if you count the hybrid. First one being the 1.5 liter turbocharged inline four cylinder and this actually is the engine setup belonging to the LX Sport that we have today EX and EXL this one puts out 192 horsepower at 5500 rpm 192 pound-feet of torque available from the power band of 1600 to 5000 rpm that power is of course going to be sent to the front wheels through a CVT giving you MPG numbers at approximately 30 in the city 38 on the highway taking regular unleaded fuel or 87 octane so that's always nice but but then you have the more powerful two liter turbocharged inline four cylinder. And this by the way is the same engine found in the Honda Civic Type R, but this particular engine setup comes standard on the Touring and it is actually optional on the EXL and the Sport. This one puts out 252 horsepower at 6,500 RPM, 273 pound-feet of torque available from the power band of 1,500 to 4,000 RPM. Again, sent to the front wheels through your choice of either a six-speed manual or a 10 speed automatic giving you a zero to 60 time of approximately anywhere in the range of 5.5 to 5.7 seconds with a quarter mile time of 14.1 seconds in case you were interested there mpg numbers come in at 26 city 35 highway for the manual 22 city 32 on the highway for the automatic but once again taking regular unleaded fueler 87 octane so well done honda for keeping it inexpensive there but so then the last power plant belonging to the hybrid trim level is going to be a two motor hybrid system and that is going to include a two liter vtec engine along with an electric motor giving you a total horse horsepower number of around 212 horsepower sent to the front wheels through a CVT and the number everybody wants to know with the hybrid MPG numbers come in at 48 in the city 47 on the highway taking regular unleaded fuel once again but said that before we do any kind of accelerations in the 2020 Accord I did want to mention the drive modes there actually are some drive mode buttons directly behind the shifter and they're going to include sport for all non hybrid trim levels and also the eco mode of course and for those of you not for familiar with Honda's eco mode that essentially is the button that you want to press when you're taking on a very long highway drive perhaps on your commute to work that is actually going to increase your miles per gallon as well and actually quite substantially that I found in the past with my Honda Civics that really increased the miles per gallon there when you hit that eco button but hybrid trim is actually also going to add an EV mode as well but having said all that I neglected to mention to you guys already we do have paddle shifters today and they are actually going to come standard on the touring trim levels but available on the sport and we do have them available to us today so what do you say let's go ahead and put it in that sport driving mode did immediately just downshift for me there so it's going to hold the rpms at a much higher level throttle sensitivity is also going to be adjusted slightly and the steering sensitivity oh my gosh that is a noticeable difference well done honda and so but i think you guys know what we have to do next let's do a quick little paddle shifter test here and let's see how quickly they react for us here we go Actually pretty darn quick. Kind of surprised there considering we have a CVT. The paddle shifters do react very quickly. So that's kind of cool that they're there. It's still a CVT, so it's not technically real shifting because there aren't any gears with the CVT, but still, it's kind of cool that they're there. All right, you guys, so now that we have tested out these paddle shifters, let's give the control back to the Accord. And right, let's do a quick little acceleration and let's see how quickly we can get this new 2020 Honda Accord here up to speed. Oh, 
okay. It actually does pin you in the back of your seat a little bit. That was kind of cool. Considering we do have the base engine set up, you guys can imagine the two liter turbocharged engine is gonna be pretty ridiculous, but absolutely no issues with merging onto the highway. This one kind of impressed me there. But so then as always to go along with that acceleration, braking is equally important. And so up front, you are gonna find 11.5 inch ventilated front discs for the LX. However, for every single other trim level, those front discs will be upsized to 12.3 inches. So it's kind of a little interesting fact there for you. In the back, you're gonna have 11.1 inch solid rear discs for every single trim level. And in my short little test drive today, I think that was the first thing I mentioned. The braking feel is excellent in the Accord. Certainly brings you to a very nice stop. There's no brake pedal delays or anything like that. Very nice braking feel in the Accord. Touching on suspension and handling a little bit up front, you're gonna get a McPherson strut front suspension. In the back, a multi-link rear suspension, front and rear stabilizer bars as well. And I do wanna also mention that when it comes to the stabilizer bars, they are slightly larger for the Sport and Touring trim levels, in case you were curious. So it is kinda of cool with the Sport trim level that Honda did more than just cosmetic upgrades. They did improve the suspension a little bit there too. So that's definitely worth mentioning. Also, here's one thing that I I absolutely love if you really wanted the best suspension available for the 2020 Honda Accord go with the touring trim level because that one is going to give you an adaptive damping system and that is of course going to monitor each damper individually monitoring the roads conditions soaking up Pennsylvania's road imperfections so giving you a smoother ride but not only that but it also tightens up the suspension during heavy cornering giving you better handling as well so really the best of both worlds if you went with that touring trim level Level, so that is very nice but overall my short test drive today ride quality has been right on point certainly no issues there steering feel is excellent when you put it in that sport driving mode and that is one thing that absolutely surprised me the second I put it in that sport driving mode instantly a heavier weighted steering wheel so it actually feels like it points you in the direction much easier than it otherwise would have and i absolutely love it i always like heavier weighted steering wheels it feels better makes you feel more sporty and in control of the car so that's always a good thing touching on cabin noise a little bit also right on point there no issues for me visibility i can see perfectly fine out the back it is a sedan you hardly ever have any issues when it comes to visibility with sedan so so everything is perfect there head up display you can actually get Get with the touring did want to mention that's a little forward visibility there it's going to help you better keep your eyes on the road so you can enjoy the drive a bit more rain sensing windshield wipers also standard with the touring so even when the accord detects a slight drizzle those windshield wipers are going to come on automatically for you they're kind of like automatic headlights so you never have to worry about it definitely a feature you get used to very quickly but that about rounds out the performance segment of this 2020 Honda Accord. Let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of this one. All right, you guys, so here it is, the 2020 Honda Accord. Quite a nice silhouette to this one, if you ask me. Let's go ahead and take a look at the front first here. Surrounding this Honda logo up front, there is some chrome trim accents. I did want to mention those chrome trim accents do differ slightly depending on the trim level. You're going to have your standard chrome for all trim levels but the Sport. So this is a little bit darker of a chrome accent. So do want to start by mentioning that. To the sides, LED low beam headlights will come standard on all trim levels with the automatic feature, meaning when it starts to get dark out, they are gonna turn on automatically for you there. Also, LED daytime running lights will come standard as well. LED fog lights, you can find those just below. They can be found on the sport trim level and up. Also, full LED headlights will come standard on the touring. And I did wanna mention a couple other things as well. You guys can see the intercooler. Of course, with the Accord engine being turbocharged, intercooler is uh, quite necessary. And just in the middle of that, actually says Honda Sensing. So that is where the Honda Sensing system is gonna be located. Adaptive cruise control, also essentially monitored through that center square object there. So in case you were curious what that was, that's to help out the Honda Sensing system, which I will get more into later in the video. But for now, let's go ahead and make our way to the side. Chrome window surrounds will come standard for all trim levels on the top there. You guys can see that. When it comes to the side mirrors, they are body colored power adjustable side mirrors for all trim levels. They will actually come heated if you were to go with the EX trim level and up and 
LED turn signals are gonna be added with the EXL and touring trim levels. But now zooming out a little bit so we can take a look at the wheels. They are gonna differ once again, depending upon the trim level. 17 inch alloy wheels will come with the LX, the hybrid, EX and EXL trim levels. And then when you go to the sport or touring trim levels, you will get 19 inch alloy wheels. You're actually gonna have a little bit of black accents to them with our sport trim level here that we have today. So do wanna mention that. Making our way to the back, shark fin antenna can be found up top on the roof there. And in case you were curious, this body color rear spoiler that you guys are currently looking at, that is going to be found only on the sport trim level, just in case you were curious there. Then just below, taking a look at those taillights, they are LED taillights with integrated LED light bars. They are quite bright at night. Trim level badging can be found just below them. Just below all of it, dual exhaust outlets for all trims. However, only two trim levels are going to have these exposed chrome tips to them. You guys can probably imagine once again, they are going to come with the sport and touring trim level so guys know what we have to do next as always here is that exhaust clip All right, so since we are around back, I did want to mention when it comes to opening the rear trunk, there actually is a button on the key fob. So I'm just going to simply press that. Or if you were inside of the Accord, there's actually going to be a button on the driver's side door down below there. So either way is going to open up the trunk for you. But once opened up, cargo capacity is going to come in at an above average number of 16.7 cubic feet. That is quite a bit more than just about every other mid-size sedan out there right now. So that's definitely pretty nice. Cargo area lighting can also be found back there. Also, some grocery hooks can also be found back there. Usually you find that in SUVs, but not all the time in sedans. So that is pretty cool. And also the levers, of course, to fold down those rear seats. There is a 60-40 split, adding a good bit of extra space there if you needed it. But now let's go ahead and make our way to the rear seats because rear legroom, once again, very impressive. 40.4 inches of rear legroom. So for reference, I'm an even six feet tall. This is how much space I have have back there and by the way this is me sitting behind my own driving position so quite a bit of extra space back there there is a rear center armrest as well with cup holders and with our sport trim level that we have here today there actually is no rear ventilation so wouldn't have minded a little bit of that touring trim level though is going to add heated rear seats as well that is another thing a lot of mid-size sedans don't offer so that is pretty cool that that's there as well Make your way up to the front seats. Manually adjustable front seats can be found with the LX and hybrid trim levels. You will get a 12-way power driver seat with four-way power lumbar if you go with the sport trim level and up. And if you wanted a power adjustable passenger seat as well, simply go with the EXL or touring trim levels. Did want to also mention you will get heated front seats with the EX trim level and up, ventilated front seats with the touring only, and you will find leather finishes with the EXL and touring trim levels as well. By the way, the sport seats that we have today, they're kind of a combination. They're a combination of leather on the outsides, but then kind of a sport fabric on the inside. So it's kind of a mixture between the two. So I did want to mention that, but taking a look at the steering wheel, it is tilt and telescoping. It will come leather wrapped for the sport, EXL and touring trim levels. And the 10 and two grips on this are actually quite impressive. They're a lot thicker than I remember old Accords having. So that's kind of cool, I do like that. Definitely has a nice feel to it with those thicker grips. But now let's go ahead and make our way to the startup. Let me first start by showing you guys the key here. You do have your Honda logo on the one side and when you flip it over, lock, unlock, and again that button to pop the rear hatch. And it's kind of a heavy duty key, so I kind of like that. But to go ahead and start this one, there is a push button start for every single trim level found just by the driver's right knee. And it is a red illuminated push button start, perhaps paying homage to one of the first cars with a push button start, the old Honda S2000, the car I learned to drive manual on. That is one of the best cars ever made in my opinion, but let's go ahead and put our foot on the brake and press that engine start button there. But so then when it comes to the gauges, first thing I wanted to mention is when the car is off and you first get into the Accord and you shut the door, it is gonna greet you with a nice little tone as well as a display on the gauges. So 
I found that pretty cool. It's a nice little way to get in the Accord, but anywho, once started up, tachometers on your left, speedometers on your right. And actually there is a digital display within the tachometer. Did want to mention that to control what is on that digital display, there are steering wheel mounted controls on the left side there. So you can choose to display that tachometer if you wanted to, or you can choose to display your fuel information. You can choose to display radio settings. There's your Bluetooth information, traffic sign recognition. There's safety features. There's really a ton of different things you can choose to display. I kind of like the old school tachometer up there, but I did want to also mention the driving modes are going to adjust the gauges slightly as well. So for instance, when you put it in eco mode, it is going to let you know you are in econ mode and it's gonna adjust the tachometer a little bit as well. Whereas if you put it in sport mode, once again, it's gonna adjust the tachometer to make room for boost pressure. That's pretty cool. I like that. Anyways, let's go ahead and make our way to overall interior quality. First thing I wanted to mention is something we don't have today. Power moonroof is gonna come with the EX, EXL, Touring, and Sport if you go with the two liter. That is the only way you're gonna get that power moonroof with the sport trim level is if it's with the two liter turbocharged engine setup. But again, we don't have that today. Wireless phone charger is going to come with the Touring. You can find dual zone climate control for every single trim level. Sunglass holder up top there on the roof. Sport pedal can be found as well with the sport trim level that we have today. I found that pretty cool. They have an aluminum finish to them there. Home light controls can be found with the EXL and touring trim levels. And overall, when it comes to the interior of the 2020 Accord, there's some wins and there's some losses. One of the cool things, kind of a carbon fiber-ish look just above the glove box. It ties into the doors as well. So definitely like that. Just in front of the shifter, there is a USB charging port as well as a 12 volt power outlet and a ton of cubby space just in front of the shifter there as well. Just behind that, you have a couple cup holders as well as an electronic parking brake and a brake hold button as well if you're stuck in traffic. And just behind that, there is a very large cargo area with a 12 volt power outlet in there and a rubberized bottom so things don't slide around as much, but perhaps something that might need a little room for improvement. There is a lot of plastic from what I'm seeing, especially around the shifter and the cup holders and all of that. So as well as just behind the tech display, which we'll get to in a second here, but perhaps if they were gonna make it plastic, maybe they should have carried the design of this carbon fiber look down to around the shifter as well. But I don't know, maybe I've reviewed too many BMWs lately. But anyways, that's my constructive criticism when it comes to overall interior quality. But now let's take a look at the tech display because this is quite cool in my opinion. Seven inch colored touchscreen display will come with the LX and hybrid trim levels. However, if you go with the sport trim level and up that we have today, you will find an upsized eight inch color touchscreen display. It does look quite large up there. It's pretty cool. Bluetooth and audio streaming will come standard for all trim levels, Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. You're gonna have to go with the sport trim level and up. So therefore we do have that today. But cool thing about Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, it is quite addicting once you have it. It does give you free navigation through your smartphone, which is constantly updated. So it's not like you have to pay the manufacturer to get an updated navigation system anymore. Also detects speed traps when you're driving. And there's a ton of pluses, especially with the Android Auto Google Maps navigation system there. But also you can like and dislike your Pandora songs up there. There's a ton of other apps you can check out actually as well. But factory navigation system is going to come with the touring trim level. And you can also check out your radio settings up there when it comes to the sound system. You will get four speakers with 160 watts if you were to go with the LX or hybrid trim levels. You will get an eight speaker sound system with the 180 watts with the sport trim level or the EX. So that is the one we have today. And if you go with the EXL or touring trim levels, you're going to find a 10 speaker sound system with 450 watts and a subwoofer. But like I said, that's not the one we have today. We do have the eight speaker sound system with 180 watts. So let's go ahead and turn on the radio here. See what we got playing this morning and let's test out the clarity of this one. Bieber for life. <laughs> Actually, not that bad of a sound system, honestly. Clarity was definitely on point. Once you get over six speakers, really, the clarity does improve quite substantially. Bass is, meh, it's okay. It's pretty much as expected there, but clarity was actually pretty decent there for the Accord. But so then anyways, last thing I wanted to mention when it comes to that tech display, at least, is when you do put the Accord in reverse, you will find a multi-angle rear view camera 
with dynamic grid lines. And when I say multi-angle, there are some buttons you can select at the bottom of that tech display, giving you multi-angles essentially. Anything from a wide angle to your normal angle to directly below the Accord. And that view is pretty important, especially if you have kids, if they leave their bikes or scooters or something directly below the Accord. So that's pretty cool too. But as always, that is going to lead us into safety. And so something I always like to start with when it comes to safety, if they do qualify at least, is the Honda Accord did get an IIHS top safety pick rating. So that's always a plus. Front side and side curtain airbags will come standard as well as driver and passenger knee airbags as well. In the back, you're gonna have latch, AKA lower anchors and tethers for children for the rear car seats. Also standard rear child door locks, a tire pressure monitoring system, automatic high beam will come standard for all trim levels as well as Honda sensing as I was mentioning earlier collision mitigation braking system is going to come with that as well as road departure mitigation system adaptive cruise control lane keep assist and traffic sign recognition so all of that is going to come standard for every single trim level that's definitely nice I did what I also mentioned if you go with the EX EXL or touring trim levels you will also get a blind spot information system with rear cross traffic alert and so, but that is about it for this one, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen there if you like. Be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're into new car reviews. That is what we do here on this channel. Do appreciate you guys watching more than you know, and I will see you guys in the next video. Stay gold.